Welcome to this Learn the Electrics video, number 12 in our 18th edition exam help series. In this video, we will look at special installations and locations, which is part seven of the wiring regulations book. It is another big section in the exam and you should expect 10 questions on part seven alone. This section contains additional requirements for certain installations and applications. As it says, these requirements are in addition to the other parts of the regulations. Each section in part seven deals specifically with the extra requirements for an individual special installation or special location. These extra requirements are enhancements to the regulations from which they are taken. They will always take precedence over the ordinary regulations. In all other respects, if there is not a special regulation, then the ordinary regulation will apply. For special locations, you must use the page three contents page in your search. It will save you lots of time in the exam. Don't flick through the book, go to page three every time and you will find part seven halfway down page three. The section numbers are listed on the left and the corresponding page number on the right. Don't let your finger drift when finding page numbers. Use a ruler or the straight edge of a piece of paper. Do not underestimate the importance of reading the names of these sections at least a few times before your exam. Knowing what is there on page three is so very important. Part seven also has a contents page, the same list as page three, except it is not as easy to find as page three and it has no page numbers to help you. So my advice, forget about page 239. It is not going to be of any use to you. There are lots of long numbers in part seven. So what do they mean? Take this regulation that is found on page 241. This regulation is about RCDs, as we shall see. You should read it in two parts. The 701 tells us it is section 701. It contains extra information about RCDs in bathrooms and shower rooms. And it is additional to the information in regulation 411.3.3 .3 in part four. Compare this to the regulation 411.3.3 .3 on page 59. It is telling us about cables that are serving zones one and two and those cables that pass through the zones on the way to somewhere else. Now, this regulation shown here and also on page 59 is not mentioned in part seven and so it stands as it is. There is a common theme that runs through most of part seven. Most modifications to the regulations covered by part seven will include things like the introduction of different zones and safety distances, keeping out of reach, the use of extra low voltage or reduced low voltage for circuits or equipment and limiting extra low voltage to just 12 volts or 25 volts. And you will also see enhanced IP ratings, lots of IP44, IPX5, etc. We will also find much more use of 30 milliamp RCDs and double insulation. There will be safety isolating transformers for SELV being mentioned quite a lot. And certain equipment or accessories will be prohibited in parts of the location. Finding information is easy as no special location contains more than 10 pages and some are less than two pages. If you can find the correct section, you can find the right answer. Bathrooms are a popular source of questions and you must understand the zones. Zone zero is the part of the bath or foot basin where the water goes. In other words, inside the bathtub only. Zone one, however, extends out to the very edge of the bath or basin. And so it is slightly wider. The height of zone one is usually taken as 2.25 meters from the floor level. And it includes the space under the bath too. However, if there is a barrier or vanity panel covering the under bath area and you need a tool or some kind of key to gain access, then the area under the bath is classed as outside the zones. An ordinary person doing ordinary things cannot get there. There are two more zones in a bathroom or room with a shower. Zone two 
extends 0.6 metres from the edge of the bathtub or basin and zone 3 extends to 3 metres from the edge of the same bathtub or basin. Beyond that is classed as being outside the zones. At Lynn Electrics we also have an extended video on bathroom zones, shower zones, saunas etc. And we will leave a link to it in the description to this video. Let's look at a typical exam style question. It might ask, in a bathroom, what is the height of zone 1? I would start my search with page 3 contents and look for locations containing a bath or shower. And this tells us to go to page 240. On page 240 we find a regulation called description of zone 1. And there's the answer. The height of zone 1 is the height of the highest shower head or water outlet or 2.25 metres above the finished floor level, whichever is the highest. Easy. Let's do another question together. With regard to external influences in a bathroom, electrical equipment in zone 0 shall have what degree of protection? And this time we have four choices of answer. Only one is the most appropriate. We are still in bathrooms and on page 424 we'll find a heading called external influences as mentioned in the question. And there's your answer, IPX7. The question will always give you enough information to find the answer. Guesswork is not required, follow the logical approach. And once you have found the answer, do not waste time analysing things, move on to the next question. Different locations will have different zones, so expect questions on these. And this table shows how these zone numbers differ between locations. And a question on zones might ask, for a fountain, which one of the following additional requirements shall be met? And we have four choices offered. To answer the question, start on page 3 and find swimming pools and other basins. A fountain is classed as other basins and you just have to get used to this style of wording. Go to page 245, section 702. Look for a regulation that includes the words fountains and additional requirements and wiring. Regulation 702.522.23 contains the right words and scanning through the regulation answer choices A and B are not word for word the same and answer C is wrong as cables are allowed in zone 0 subject to certain conditions. Answer D is the only correct answer cable type H 07RN8-F. External influences appear in almost every section. Water ingress, dust, impact, ambient temperatures, chemicals, altitude and a whole range of problems for the installation. If a question comes up on external influences, the answer will most often be found in regulation XXX.512.21 of each section as shown here where, in this case, XXX means section 701, section 702, etc. A full list of external influences will be found in Appendix 5, which we will look at next time. Sometimes you need to think carefully about a question. The correct section is not immediately obvious. An example of this might be this question. Equipment installed in a car park site shall be protected against mechanical damage to at least and there are your four choices. But it doesn't matter how much you look, car parks are not listed on page 3. But ask yourself this, what uses a car park? It has to be cars and other vehicles. And what is the wiring regulations about? It's about electricity. Put the two together and we have electric vehicles. We can find this, it's section 722 and points us towards page 316. And there is the answer. A devious question, but just apply some logic to it. Also, be certain that you're in the right section. These three here might sound similar, but they are not. You'll be asked questions 
that can only be answered by looking in the correct section. A caravan is different to a caravan park. A mobile unit is not a caravan. And you can waste several minutes looking in the wrong section. Please read the question. And here is another example. These are not the same thing. They are not the same place as far as the regulations are concerned. You will be asked questions that are specific to a certain section. Get the wrong section and you get the wrong answer. Wrong answer, no marks. What I'm trying to say is, read the question. It will always tell you where to look. Use page 3 to find the correct section. And it is now a matter of just a few pages to look through. And do not analyse the answer. Find the answer, move on. Now we can look at some questions. First, as always, the answers to the last questions on part 5 of the book. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video and check if you need to. 8 out of 8, hopefully. Repeat that in the exam and you are well on your way to a pass. OK, questions on special locations. This week there are 10 questions to have a go at. Question 1 is about swimming pools. Read the question. Use page 3 to find the page number and then look for external influences. For question 2, find operating and maintenance gangways on page 3. If you find the correct section, you cannot fail to find the answer. Question 3 now. The question even tells you which section to go to. Which of the four possible answers is not specifically mentioned in the scope of the section. Easy. Question 4 is about showers, so just follow what the question is asking. This question, number 5, just needs you to follow the same logical approach. Electric vehicles, devices for fault protection. Do that and the answer is easily found. On to question 6. All the clues are in the question. With question 7, it might be a little harder to find the correct section because the word fairground does not appear at the beginning of the section title. It is hidden near the end. But find it and you will soon find the answer. All the clues are there for question 8. Analyse the question, find the section and find the answer. An easy one for question number 9. And lastly, number 10. The section to look in appears at the end of the question. If you find the right section, you cannot fail to find the right answer. Good luck with those 10 questions and, as we always do, we will give you the answers in the next session. Well, that's it. All about special locations. Think logically. Use page 3 as a starting point and you will always find the answers. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics to be both useful and enjoyable and that you are continuing to add to your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe you also help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.